Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm Sanjay Mishra. I'm with Talijan Corporation, and I'm here to talk to you about OpenBook, uh, which is a uh, uh, rating and billing solution for OpenStack environments. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to walk through the product itself just to give you a sense of what the product does and, and what we're aiming to do. Uh, for those of you who might have attended the Salometer presentation yesterday, uh, if you saw the three-part slide that talked about what Salometer does uh, and then what follows uh, beyond Salometer, uh, metering is what Salometer does. We sit behind metering and we aim to provide the rating and the billing component behind that. So in, uh, in, in talking to folks here and talking to folks uh, uh, prior to this event as we were developing the product, uh, we heard a lot of feedback about uh, the, the, the gorpy, murky process that happens in between having metrics on the one hand and generating a bill that goes to the customer on the other hand, and that's the part that we aim to solve. So we would like uh, to be able to provide a solution that uh, takes metric data, lets you apply cost to it, and then generate a bill that uh, then you can present to a customer. Uh, our, our typical deployment is uh, uh, as an on-premise solution. Uh, we're a Java application running on Tomcat uh, with a Cassandra database uh, sitting underneath it. So let me just dive in. I'll log in. I'll um, uh, walk you through uh, what some of the key features of the product are. And um, thank you for coming. Uh, I should announce, I've been asked to announce that at the end of this, uh, uh, we have a drawing for an Apple TV. So stick around till the end. Uh, if, if you stop by our booth earlier and put your business card in uh, the jar there, then that's what we're going to be drawing from. So uh, my main focus is going to be in talking about our uh, OpenStack integration. We integrate with VMware as well, and we have a Hyper-V integration in the works. Uh, but clearly, at OpenStack today, we're, we're talking about OpenStack. Uh, one of the things that we provide in an OpenStack environment is the ability to define a, um, a rich, multi-layered, end-tier organizational structure, and then to take the, the OpenStack clusters or the infrastructure and map it into that. So as you look over here on the left, uh, BNCC Corporation is just a test environment that we created. Uh, within this, uh, you, you have uh, the ability to define multiple layers. So whether it's by geography, whether it's by business unit, whether it's by application group, uh, you, you can define uh, what we call resource groups. And then when you come over on the open, OpenStack side and you import an OpenStack tenant into the environment, then you can either bring them in as uh, an individual customer, or you can take these, uh, these tenants and, and import them in as resource groups within an existing customer. So this is just, um, uh, this is, the, this is the, uh, the, the, the cloud admin view. Uh, the, this is the view for somebody who has visibility into uh, all the tenants in the environment. Uh, we have a full uh, role-based security model, so as you set up a tenant, uh, you can define tenant admins for, uh, for individual tenants, and their view as they come into this portal is restricted to that one tenant, and, and, and then you can further refine what they can or cannot do by, uh, by granting them permissions. So um, uh, anyway, the dashboard just giving you a sense of system activity. Uh, switching over to the administration side, give you a sense of what it takes to actually integrate with an OpenStack environment. Uh, this is about the extent of what we ask for. Uh, the server name or the host name, the, uh, the API endpoint that, um, uh, uh, say, the, the Horizon dashboard would connect to, and then the credentials that you would use to log in through uh, Horizon to look at the entire environment. So user ID, password, the default domain, and so on. And uh, at that point, we're connected. So once we're connected, we pull uh, the metrics that are available through Solometer. Uh, our current integration uh, is, is with Solometer version 1, and uh, we're working on, on moving that over to version 2 because of the significant differences and improvements that have happened between version 1 and version 2. So through Solometer, we're getting uh, all, all the data on, on changes to the infrastructure. So as uh, managed entities, meaning in, in, uh, instances or networks or ports, subnets, as they get created, destroyed, changed, we pick up that data, and at the same time, we're also picking up the, uh, the utilization and the consumption data. So measuring how much CPU is utilized, measuring how many uh, bytes of network traffic are being generated from an endpoint. So uh, this is the list of metrics that, that's being collected. In this environment, we're collecting all of them. You have the ability to, to fine tune that uh, and, and restrict that to an error set if you so choose. Um, 
that's one set of data. Uh, once you have that, you also define what we call billable features. And uh, billable features are just the things that are uh, either provisioned to a customer or the resources that are being consumed by a customer and that you want to bill on. So um, in this case, uh, we have the OpenStack entity set up as, um, uh, as, as provisioned features. Uh, on the other hand, you also have uh, the actual utilization data that you can measure on. So we have two classes of entities that, that you're billing on, just either uh, managed entities, infrastructure elements, services, or uh, the actual utilization data. So in, in setting up uh, one of these, um, I'm just gonna use a VMware example just because it's a demo environment and uh, uh, the OpenStack stuff is not exactly good working in this case. But uh, so you choose a metric, you define what frequency you want to measure that, uh, that metric and, and how you wanna charge for it. So in this case, this is, you're still setting up the environment and you're setting the defaults that you wanna charge users for. So uh, say for CPU utilization, in every five minute interval, you take a measurement and you define what you wanna charge. And so this is the initial setup. You've, you've, um, uh, you've, you've configured what, uh, what you wanna charge. And then as the final step, uh, you define what we call a rate plan. Uh, and the rate plan just sort of brings everything together in terms of uh, your charges and, and then lets you assign those to customers. So one of the key things uh, that we did not want to do in our implementation was to lock you into a particular way of billing uh, for, for the infrastructure. So uh, the, the system supports multiple rate plans. Uh, you can have rate plans that, uh, that either vary by geography or vary by, um, uh, by the type of billing that you wanna do. Uh, you can assign rate plans across uh, different levels in the, in the organizational hierarchy. So you can have uh, uh, one rate plan for one customer, a different rate plan for a different customer. Um, you can even vary rate plans within the tenant itself. So one, uh, there, there's a particular rate plan for one business unit and a different rate plan for uh, a different business unit. Uh, so just some of the key elements of a rate plan. Uh, this is what I like to call the hygiene section in that this is all the stuff that you kind of have to do, uh, sort of like brushing your teeth. I mean, so we support um, uh, discounting. Uh, we, we support uh, uh, currency uh, and, and being able to vary currency across, uh, across tenants. Uh, the way we don't do currency conversion in our implementation, what we do with currency information is match the currency that's defined for a rate plan against the currency that's defined for a tenant. So if you have a, if you have a tenant who, uh, who expects to receive a bill in US dollars, then uh, we verify that a rate plan that's uh, assigned to them also is a US dollar rate plan. Um, proration, so you may have uh, charges that you bill at different intervals. Uh, you, you have a monthly charge for a VM, say. Uh, and then how do you want to treat a, a, a partial billing period? So a VM gets added in the middle of the month. Do you prorate that charge uh, uh, on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, whatever? You have the option of doing that. And then how do, we, uh, how, how do you want to handle partial billing? So do you, do you just do actual proration or do you just do full, full scale uh, rounding up to the entire uh, period? Uh, in defining assignees, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can choose to assign a rate plan at any level in the hierarchy. So if I, within BNCC Corporation, if I want a test rate plan here, but I wanted a different rate plan for Asia, I have the ability to do that. Uh, rate plans are effective for periods of time. So you can stack up rate plans. You can have this rate plan uh, uh, active for this particular period of time. You know that a change is coming, so you can go ahead and define the change and have it, uh, have it active from some point in the future. Uh, it brings me to an important aspect of um, uh, the solution as well in that uh, everything is timestamped for compliance and, and uh, tracking purposes. Uh, any change that happens is, is uh, timestamped. Nothing ever really gets deleted. It just sort of gets expired and says uh, it's no longer valid. In, uh, in assembling the uh, elements that you're building on, so this is what uh, I showed you earlier in terms of setting up a billable feature. Uh, when, when, I, when I choose a uh, provisioned entity that I'm, I'm, uh, I want to bill on, uh, I can, I, I choose my entity, I'd previously defined what my default costs are for, for particular billing periods, and uh, when, I, uh, when I actually uh, assign it to a rate plan, I can choose to override those. So I had previously said my default cost for a firewall is $1.50 per day, but in this case, if I wanna charge $2, then I can do that. Um, 
feature attribute based, based costs are the, the, the more fine grained billing based on what the actual characteristics of an entity are. So uh, the, the use case would be something like, um, I, I, I want to charge $10 a month for a VM, but if the VM is running Windows, then I want to charge $5 more uh, per month. And so when we pull data from Salamra, when we get data from OpenStack, not only are we getting the list of managed entities, but we're pulling the attributes that uh, are with those entities as well. And so you can take any of those attributes and, and you can attach cost uh, associated with that. So uh, just um, uh, uh, another level of detail that, that we can... Um, we can bill on. And then finally, the usage-based costs. Uh, in setting up usage-based costs, you define the frequency at which um, uh, you want to calculate the cost. So this particular metric is available to me in five-minute intervals, hourly intervals, daily intervals. And so I, I can choose, say, uh, once per hour. Uh, and then I can choose either a simple or a tiered billing mechanism. So the simple billing mechanism is just, you know, here's my measurement. I'm, I'm going to multiply it by a number, and that's it. The tiered billing mechanism, uh, the best example I can think of is the way that I get my water bill, where for the first 2,000 gallons, I pay uh, 20 cents a gallon. For the next 1,000, 2,000 gallons, I pay 40 cents a gallon, and so on. And so you have, you have the ability to define multiple tiers and, and charge differently. And then you can either uh, charge, you can only bill, you can, you can bill either only at the tier that matches, or you have the ability to roll that all up and, and collect data. So. That's uh, setting up the, uh, uh, the, the, the billing mechanism. Uh, I'm going to close with, oh, this is what I was, uh, let me, let me see if I can switch my screen resolution so that it shows up a little bit better here. And so what I'm doing here is I'm taking this rate plan and I'm taking this particular tenant. Um, and this is actually, here's the risk with doing a live demo. There's something that's gone wonky with our demo environment where uh, not all the detail that should be showing up here is actually showing up. But I can at least show you the um, uh, utilization-based uh, uh, cost as it's, as it's uh, uh, being generated here. So in this case, uh, this is a very simple use case that we picked. Uh, I have, uh, the tenant has one uh, VM. And uh, we're, we're showing the usage-based costs for this particular VM. And so in this case, we metered CPU and network outgoing bytes. Uh, this is the number of metrics that we collected. And, uh, and this is the cost that we calculated based on this rate plan, rate plan. So in this case, I generated this live. It lets you do uh, some uh, basic level of mod modeling and some um, what-if kind of analysis. So if it lets you take, uh, it lets you tweak parameters of a rate plan and actually apply those to an actual environment and see what, uh, what you might end up with. Um, yeah. So. I'll just close with, uh, uh, I'll close with the security model. As, as I was mentioning earlier, we have a full role-based model. This same uh, UI can also be exposed to the tenant, and uh, the tenant admin can log in and, uh, and see what's happening within the environment uh, through the same interface. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs>